should be able to see from the screen whether anybody is doing this on who they meet. I was talking to Loretta mm -hmm. about the children act. Mm -hmm. She brought, watched the movie again, and um, she said she couldn't get through the book. But she kind of agreed with our assessment of mm -hmm. the judge. Okay. That she was a little bit too stoic with her reactions to Adam. That was interesting. Okay. Well, I haven't met it. I mean, the other people weren't here, but I haven't met anyone yet who said they agreed with the judge. Yeah, um, my mom couldn't make it to the um, Google Meets. Um, we are just uh, we're recommending books, movies, other media that we enjoyed recently. Do you want to come on in? All right, come on in. Well, I'm going to do what I Okay, all right, you're probably going to be in here until about three. Um, yeah, um, but I had a long conversation with my mom about the Children Act. I wish she could have participated. Um, but yeah, she and I, she and I both have really strong feelings about it. Mm -hmm. What were her feelings? Um, you know, much the same mm -hmm. as mine. That um, you know, that the young man really should have been allowed to make his own decision. You know, at seventeen and a half, so close to eighteen. Yeah, I think it was even closer. Than yeah, 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 and that it just seemed needlessly cruel to be like you're just three months away from from being allowed to make your own choices. And it's interesting that well, another thought I had later was that what was he didn't seem to have a negative reaction towards the judge for overriding his beliefs. I thought that was interesting. Now, mm -hmm. when I thought about it. Mm -hmm. It, it was interesting to me, and you know, and I actually was talking um, with a friend of mine, and she pinged something that I didn't pin, um, that the um, the father, when he was in court, he swore on the Bible, and I, I my understanding is that a Jehovah's Witness would not do that. In right, because the Bible says do not swear. Right, right. So that seemed a, a little bit... Maybe, you know, the author didn't do his research on that. Exactly, he could do his research on um, The other thing that I thought of later was like when you were saying that Adam refused all treatment later when his uh, leukemia came back, because the blood transfusion can be kind of temporary. So, um, and I don't know what that would have been when they said all treatment, because we were talking about that. Is there any other treatment? So, in essence, the ending um, could have been the same mm -hmm. if his beliefs had been respected and then the way it eventually turned out. Or it could have been impacted, his personality could have been impacted by the blood transfusion itself. That's been known to happen. Plus his disappointment in the judge. It could also be, um, yeah, I, I remember that you had mentioned that the, the treatment itself could cause a personality change. And that that, that could be true, um, but I was thinking, I mean, it could also be um, like psychological or like it, he, he felt change, mm -hmm. you know, like not necessarily, not necessarily in a chemical reaction, but like uh, emotionally he felt change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, a blood transfusion can be compared to an organ transplant. But again, it looks not, I don't think it's as permanent as even an organ transplant. It depends on what kind of, um, what kind of treatment it is. Um, like, I remember you would ask about other treatments for leukemia. Um, but like, because leukemia is a blood disorder, it kind of, um, like in general, um, blood tr transfusion is necessary 
to treat it. I mean, there there may be some other methods, but um, but in general, it is necessary. And sometimes um, the the person can be can get a complete bone marrow transplant that completely changes their blood type, mm -hmm. which is which is interesting. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mary, did you even talk about the Children Act? We're kind of, because we didn't have an in-person, we're kind of doing a little Children Act wrap-up before oh, we do sure. our recommendations. Sure. I was just intrigued by the whole problem of mm -hmm. it. Uh, you know, my reaction is, well, I'm torn, and it, it's kind of a, um, what do you call it, when you say something and it, goes against, you, you say something about somebody else and it goes against what you would want for yourself. Right. Um, and it's like, I have, well, but that doesn't matter. Um, I, I just thought it was an interesting situation and an interesting, now I thought, I thought as a judge it was just fine that she was um, calm about it. I mean, that, that's her job, to not get hysterical or especially emotionally involved in all of this. It's just like, what? And, but I'm with y'all as much as I think, I think, she, I think that he should have been left to make his own decision. Um, it was a hard one, and um, it was sad, but in the end, and I, I, I like the fact that the um, author didn't have him healed and everything was happy right. and blah, blah, blah. It was like, okay, here's what could possibly happen. I like it. She did that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I try to wrap it up in my mind in, in simple terms, and it's like something went wrong there, or several things went wrong, and it's up to the reader to decide mm -hmm. what those things were. Mm -hmm. And maybe like if he was a college professor or before or whatever, then they're used to bringing, you know, getting the students to discuss and think about those things. And, and maybe that's more important than the actual, you know, like, you know with, with medical things, those are always so, um, you know, I don't know what the word is, but they're not guaranteed because there's so many factors that could go into it. Yeah, a less sophisticated word is tricky. <laughs> yeah, it's um, pernicious, or I don't know the other word is. But I see you read the uh, Rainforest people. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so do we want to move to recommendation group? Yeah. All right, so um, as I mentioned in a previous recommendation group, I am fully fascinated by reading about people who, who live in like very environmentally hostile, um, areas like you know like the Arctic or like rainforests or like at any type of ecosystem that I'm like I cannot imagine living there I like I'm very fascinated by it so that's what led me to pick up this book um, it's a nonfiction people in the rainforest um, the Villas, Villas Boas brothers explores the humanitarians of the Amazon by John Hemming um, and it is a, it's a nonfiction account of um, some of the um, expeditionary teams who were sent by the Brazilian government into the Amazon rainforest um, to basically to claim the territory for Brazil um, because the people who live I mean it, 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 legally is considered part of Brazil, but the um, people who live there in the rainforest don't identify as Brazilian. They identify as their own their own nation um, and have never agreed to be ruled by Brazil. How many tribes are there? Oh, a lot. A lot. <clears throat> and they kind of identify as one group together? or? Oh, um, well, some of them, again, some of them um, identify just as as an individual nation, and then some of them have, have in more recent years, kind of started to come together, especially, like, um, sort of, like, in union against the Brazilian government, because, by and large, they don't want to be part of Brazil. 
Right. Kind of like the American of, Indians. Right. They right. are many different nations. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and, and for the most part, wanting to be independent. Um, so the Brazilian government sent in expeditionary teams to, but yeah, basically to map and claim the territory, um, and also meet the people who lived there. And um, some of it is 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 interesting because, and also also a little bit anger producing because. Like there's there's like the, the benign aspect of oh cross cultural exchange, but then there's there's also a lot of exploitation and you know try, trying to displace people. And what were the years of that? Uh, this these expeditions were in like the 1930s and 40s, um, but the the independence movements of the indigenous Amazonians are still very much going on. Yeah, that reminds me of another movie. It's a book, so I can't think of the book. But the movie is Beyond the Gates of Splendor. Mm -hmm. And it's based on a book. And so in Ecuador, in the 50s, the um, oil and gas people were going to move in to the um, Ecuadorian area. And the problem there, the tribes were, especially this one tribe, they were so violent they had a very high murder rate. Like if somebody made them mad, they would just kill them. And so these missionaries wanted to help them, American missionaries, to try to, I don't know, negotiate or something so it wouldn't be so bad. And they landed in on a plane, but like with a helicopter, they had this thing where they were able to just land down. And this was in 1955, so the men went there the wives and children sent behind. And what happened was that they were massacred. They were killed um, by these people, you know. And um, so later on, the women came in and they taught those tribes not to kill people. So they were very brave. And um, so the movie Beyond the Gates of Splendor illustrates that. But and then there was a, another um, documentary. I'm sorry, I don't think it was a book. It was another documentary, but that was a drama. So you might find that um, very interesting. I think I, I think I would. I I'd be surprised that they, like, I guess made peace. Yeah, because they taught them. They were able, and I guess being women, they weren't as threatening. Right, right. That makes sense. So one of the boys whose father was killed. Um, so they, they all be, they became friendly. So one of the men who had actually killed his father, you know, came to be in his life, and they visited him in the United States somewhere. So this man was who had actually killed his father, but they were in a grocery line, and they were observing what would happen. The people would hand them their credit card, hand it back, and he said, well, you just smile at the lady. You hand her your card, she smiles back, gives your card back, and then you get your groceries. That was how he used his pocket. So, um, yeah, I thought that was my time that interesting. Yeah, yeah, that, that does, that, that, yeah, that, that definitely does sound interesting. I saw a thing, I think it was in the Week magazine, but I saw a thing where just recently, um, I don't know. I think it might be Brazil, but they have stopped some of the development in in the jungles. Yes, yes. Well, and I, and and that it that was I think because of the resistance of the people who lived there. Oh, oh I'm who sure. are absolutely blocking the bulldozers, you know, because that's that's mm -hmm. their home and their natural resources mm -hmm. um, that they have cultivated. But yeah, but the government has come around to see that. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It's not just money, it's these people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the current president of was it Brazil was gonna go in and um, do a lot of development. Mm -hmm. Bolsaro or something. Yeah, Bolsonaro, yeah. He backed off some. Yeah, yeah. Um it's but it's it's still it's a, it's still an ongoing political fight there. 
Well, I have another, I, I got a movie out from the library here. It's called Thicker Than Water. Mm -hmm. And it starred Lindsay, uh, Lindsay something. She was in a lot of, um, she was a bionic woman in the 70s and she's been in a lot of TV movies. Lindsay was in, okay. I, um, anyway, so this other girl from Little House on the, on the Prairie or whatever, she goes to visit them because her father had another family before her and she wanted to meet them and so it, it does you know it was her family but they didn't know it right away so but the real issue was the horses that they would they were wanting to move these wild horses out of the way uh, for grazing land this is a real um a real issue and uh so the population of the earth has gotten too much for everybody to be able to be meeting meat. Um, and so they keep making, you know, more grazing land and then the wild horses are in their way. Mm -hmm. So that's a big issue. And I've donated to that, you know, a wild horse, you know, thing where they're trying to save them, get sanctuaries, um, use birth control or whatever to help and, you know, this mass this you know massacre of wild horses because that was always at home so i thought that was interesting that they were that this movie was showcasing um that particular issue mm -hmm. and in the end melissa gilbert was her name is there a way to turn the fan on higher um there is not unfortunately um because i changed it from auto to on is it better with auto it's it's about the same either way, um, but I, the air conditioning in this room is I think I, I think in need of repair. In the main library, it's fine, but yeah. this is a separate okay. system. Because if you know for events and things like that, they might. I I I agree. Um, I think I think it's a little in need of repair. So um, in the end, like this Melissa Gilbert character, she was a high pollutant lawyer, and then this other family that her father had, they were not, they were on the land. So there was this juxtaposition, but in the end, she was able to get them some money because she was indeed related to them, and they were able to get lawyers and things to, to deal with that particular issue. So it's called um, Thicker Than Water, and you can see it Okay, yeah, that does sound interesting. I would recommend that. Okay. You have something to recommend? Well, I have a, a book, and I think I may have recommended it before, but I really think it's a good one. It's called Annie Prue, Accordion Crime. And what it is, it starts off with this Spanish guy coming to the United States around the beginning of the 20th century, when a lot of immigrants were coming in. And he, he builds this accordion, and he comes by himself and leaves his family behind. And he was planning on going to New York, but he changed his mind, goes to Louisiana instead, where he uh, gets in a, in, a, in a poker game, gets in a fight, and loses his life and they steal his accordion, they take his accordion. Well, they use the accordion to go through all of the immigrant groups that are coming into the United States. You, the people who stole his accordion, you learn about their group. And then it's either sold or it's lost or stolen, and it goes on to the next person. And it goes through several immigrant groups that sounds really interesting. Yeah, so you learn through this, this, uh, this, this uh, musical instrument um, about about the immigration and the people who are, and you you get to see a picture of the people who are involved that are not necessarily your traditional view of these people. I mean, some of them are very good people, and some of them are not. It's just. Once again, you learn that wherever people come from, people are people, and good ones and bad ones alike. And uh, and then and it just surprised me some of the nationality groups that were into accordions. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, that is, that is interesting. <laughs> and I really like that um, narrative technique of like mm -hmm. having an object or a prop mm -hmm. be what the narrative follows mm -hmm. through all the different characters. And it's not like they go back in history and then forward like we've been through a lot of people think to It goes in. forward. It just continues so going. So that would make a good movie. It just goes it just yeah. goes around. And then and then the ending is very, very interesting. Okay. It, it, it's a nice little it's not necessarily a twist. But it, cause somehow it should be there in the back of your mind, but it isn't. But um, it, it's really, and, and I mean, it goes and goes and goes until it falls apart. <laughs> I, I, I really like it. I love Annie Prue anyway, but. Um, okay. Yeah, I like, I, I, I think that might be a good book club hit. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, considering to some people that it's not necessarily a female protagonist. Um, but uh, it's, it's just, like I said, it approaches all kinds of people and you, and you learn people are people wherever they come from. They may eat funny things and they may talk funny, but they're just folks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it, it's not a male protagonist, it's not like an ensemble no. cast. Right, yeah. All right, it's an ensemble cast. You, you get to know all of us. And did you have another book then? I did, I did. I have a book recommendation that segues right into a movie recommendation. Okay. So my book recommendation is The Spare Man by Mary Robinette Kowal. And um, I've read several of her books and really liked them. Um, this particular book is, um, a lot of her books are like, um, alternate history, science fiction type of stories. This is, this is, a, it's like a science fiction, um, murder mystery. Very much up my alley. A science fiction murder mystery with a disabled protagonist. Okay. So it's fully up my alley. Yes. Yeah. And, um, so this is, it takes place, you know, in the vaguely indefinite future uh, when people are traveling to Mars and the protagonist is um, on a uh, cruise spaceship to Mars with her husband um, and her little dog, you can see on the cover. The dog is an important character. And, uh, you know, somebody is murdered and her husband is rescued. It's not the dog. Okay. The dog. The dog lives. If this okay. were, if this were, does the dog die? Dot com. It would be the dog lives. Okay. Um, but um, so her husband is arrested for the murder. So of course she has to uh, find the real killer. But there's also um, so you know it's it's kind of a very standard uh, murder mystery type of story in an interesting setting. And there, but there's also a lot about. Um, her ha her having uh, this dog who is a service dog, um, and is and is a, a service dog um, because she uh, she has she's disabled from a, a chronic injury, and there's a little bit of a you know mystery as to how she became injured, and that's revealed over the course of the story. But um, there's there's actually a lot in the story about how the dog is trained to um, signal and alert her and sense her anxiety. And um, I love service dogs. So uh, that was just a huge, I, I, I just really enjoyed this story. I know that uh, Book Club has so far um, kind of steered clear of like the uh, science fiction, speculative fiction type genre, but if we were to do a, uh, that type of story, I think that this would be a good one. But this segues right into my movie recommendation because uh, at some point in the story, they are talking about a production of the play uh, Dancing at Lunasa. And I was like, oh wow, I did not know, I didn't know it was a play, but I didn't know anybody but me knew that movie. Dancing at what? Dancing at Lunasa. Luna. Luna Saw. It's Irish. Okay. Um, and Dancing at Luna Saw is, well, it's, it's a play. I looked it up and I learned that it was a play first. I know it as a movie. 
Um, but it is it's a movie slash play um, told from the perspective of um, a man recollecting his childhood um, in a small town in Ireland in the 1930s where he grew up with um, his mom, who was a single mom, and her four sisters, his aunts. And um, then there, and then his uncle um, was a priest who had been an overseas missionary and kind of had a crisis of faith and kind of there's there's a whole spiritual element about the kind of Christian and pagan syncretism um, because the the priest uncle is like maybe like maybe I feel more aligned with these um, pagan practices than with Christianity um, but that that's kind of a really only a small part of the story. The bulk of the story is just this everyday life of this family uh, in this small town. There's, you know, an aunt who's a teacher. There's an aunt who has kind of a fraught relationship with a boyfriend. Um, that is a brief kind of disturbing scene um, that one of the one of the aunts um, is is learning disabled and she's kind of threatened at one point, but she's okay um, for a while. Um, so it, it's um, it's kind of similar to some of the some of the other stories that we've talked about. That it's it's not really about a plot or like action. It's just kind of a slice of life type of story. But um, I really enjoyed it. And I, so when I I stumbled across it in this book, I was like. Somebody else knows Dancing at Lunasaw. I thought that was, I thought that was so obscure. It, it's not. I just, <laughs> I had met anybody who also liked it. But, um, so that is my movie recommendation. Oh, the the movie is called what? Dancing at Lunasaw. Oh, okay. Spell that last. The, word. the play movie that was featured. Do not know how to spell it. I will look it up. It will be in the uh, descriptive. Uh, in the description of the Facebook video. That raises a question in my mind. With so many books like that that you've read, um, an obvious question is, do you have an idea to write your own book? Um, maybe? Why not? Why not? I mean, do you have a I, 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 I have a NASA. L-U-G-H-N-A-S-A. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> um. Sure. I, I could write a book. I don't. I don't know. I have a few different plot ideas in my head. Okay. okay. So you have picked that idea. I, I yeah. Think, yeah. I can. I can. Since you read so much. Um. I have another movie recommendation. This is a, a relatively recent movie because he was nominated for best actor at the last Ken Ken called Living, um, and Bill Meehy was uh, nominated for Best Actor. Okay. And I, th I believe I got it at the library. So he's a middle bureaucrat in England in the 1950s. And these uh, women want to have a playground, have a playground <laughs> created. Oh, and so their petition just kind of gets kicked uh -oh. around. <laughs> through all these offices of the, you know, I don't have the correct name for everything, but, and it goes, you know, back to his office and he takes it and just throws it in the file, you know, but about what we'd expect, but, um, and he lives with his son and his wife, but not close to them, and then he founds out he's got a terminal disease, a terminal illness, and so he really changes and he does end up pushing this playground through all the bureaucracy. And one scene that really stood out is and he's in the office of the top guy and they said, yeah, we'll look into it. And he said, great, I've got all day. I'll sit here and wait for that. So it was really, it was really um, 
you know, good, how he changed and, and everything. So I'm sorry, what was the name again? Living. Okay. Yeah. With Bill Meek. Okay. Well, I have a movie. Um, it's a 1948 movie, The Red Shoes. And um, it's about, I don't know if you know the, the Anderson fairy tale, The Red Shoes, but it's about a little girl who was sent to buy food for her grandmother and instead she buys these red dancing shoes. And she puts them on and the dancing shoes take over her life. <laughs> She can't take them off, and she dances until she dies. And um, but the but the story but the movie uh, saying that she this it, it just follows this ballet dancer's life and uh, short life, and she uh, meets up with this um, conductor, and um, they they become involved, but it's. It, it's not romantic, romantic, gushy, gushy. I'm not into that. But I mean, he understands that yes, people use music for dancing, but that's not the real reason for music. And she understands that yes, there's music, but only so people can dance, sort of thing. You know, they they don't have the same connection to either one of them. And um, and the the guy who is in charge of the ballet troupe that she's in. Uh, becomes really passionate about her and her career. Not once, once again, not gushy gushy, but passionate about her and her her, her dancing and her career. And and I just is I that, think about it all the time. The red shoes. Uh huh. Yeah, I heard about it. Oh, know. the red shoes. Yes, and I and I just love it. And I see it. Every, and I have my own personal copy. It's one of the very few movies that I watch by myself. <laughs> They mentioned that a lot in anthologies, so it must be a very good 1949? 48. Yeah. I, I have a 1940s movie to recommend. Okay. Um, I have a 1940s movie to recommend, but I'm, well, I want to turn it over to the two gentlemen who just came in. You, sir, do you, have, uh, have you enjoyed any books? Movies? Anything like that? Anything like that? Yeah. 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 About man, it was about him and his dog. Well, he raised he raised his dog up in a little puppy right here, um, down south. And um, uh, he it was just him, his, his wife, and his and his dog. And the the wife kind of judged the dog because he keeps. He showed more love, more favor to go, you know what I'm saying? And um, he was a school teacher, and he would catch the train, go to work, uh, at college. And when he came, when, uh, one day, um, he took sick, and he never came back home from work. He passed out in class. And um, the dog sat right there away every day at the train for him to come home. He come back, he come home, right? Never came home. And she stayed right there till he came puppy, the dog got old and died. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah. And the name of it is? Um, I forgot the name of it. Yeah. Yeah, we'll find yeah, it. All right, I'll see if I, I'll see if I can find the title based on based I, on that description. I'm having trouble thinking of uh, any movies from the forties. I know there's a bunch of them, but mm -hmm. could you just name some kind of refresh my memory? Uh, well, the one I was going to recommend, which is on Canopy, I got to plug Canopy again. <laughs> you can stream movies for free with your library card. Um, and I've been watching, I watched a couple of Canopy movies uh, with my mom, and one of them was Meet John Doe from 1941. Oh, yeah. that's a good one. I've, ne I've never seen it, I've never heard of it, um, but... When Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Yeah, that that's from that same time. Mm -hmm. Well, it was uh, Citizen Kane, was that the 30s? Or the yeah, 30s? that was from the 30s. Yeah. Well, I, can't, I know a lot of them. 
Well, I don't, I, I, I'm kind of drawing a blank on the 40s. That was before my time, and I can't really think of any. Well, have you, is, is there anything else you want to recommend? I mean, does it have oh, to be from the well, yeah, I'm still politicking for a, a nice and man by Steinbeck. And she says no. Huh? I did. What? I did. Uh, I think it. I understand why you don't like it, but I think that would make a good thing to talk about. Well, is what's good about it? It's got everything in it. It's got every facet of human nature right there in a fairly small book. It's got the murder, the jealousy, the arrogance, the innocence. The it's got the whole nine yards. And he did win the Nobel Prize. I mean, you know, I don't know why. Oh, she didn't say that. <laughs> you, you, you can, you can no, say it, that. I, I don't know, Steinbeck, he, well, he, he's kind of in that transition period of the 20s to the 30s, and they talk about what an influence movies had on fiction writing. He kind of changed the perspective a little bit. But I loved him in college. But when I read him later on, it just didn't seem as just didn't seem as impressive. I don't know. It was, it was still good stuff, you know, but it didn't hold up to some of the sixties and fifties writers seem to me. But you know, everybody's in his own place. And, so. to, be, to, to be clear, I didn't I didn't say no. I said I don't like the book. If but, but we can I, put it to a vote. Yes, I think it's well, disturbing. Was it a movie too? Yeah, it's a, yeah, the whole yeah, it's, it's very disturbing. Is it a movie too? Yeah, it's, I'll watch the movie. But yeah, it's uh, yeah, it, 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 the whole thing is disturbing. But it, so it gives a lot to talk about, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean you got the mm -hmm. murders and you got the you got the whole way everything's in there really. You got the floozy wife and the jealous. Mm -hmm. Help husband is the son of the big shop boss and Lenny who doesn't even know what his name is but he's a giant you know mm -hmm. so and then you got Lenny's keeper who's mm -hmm. whatever his name is not his keeper but his friend that tell I thought it was it's just one. a it's just a yeah. lot of a lot of to it mm -hmm. yeah. but you know any books or books or whatever you want to choose from I, before you got here y'all got here. I talked to them about um, Annie Cruz's accordion crimes. That's good. It talks about the history of immigration through an accordion that oh, was passed okay. around. That's interesting. Uh huh. She did a good job. Yeah. Has anybody ever heard of the Night Circus? I've heard of it. I haven't I don't read it. Know what it is? Yeah. Well, it's a novel, and that's all I got is the title. I don't know anything about it. But... Well, I. Um, I don't want to interrupt you. I have another book recommendation. Mm -hmm. um, I talked about this before, but I hadn't finished reading it. I still haven't. But anyway, Sally Fields autobiography and her career. And um, so, where I'm reading now is she got with Burt Reynolds because they made several mm -hmm. movies together, Smoking the Bandit. I haven't seen any of those movies. It never appealed to me. Stacy loves them. So mm -hmm. I'm not them. But um, she won an Emmy for Sybil. But mm -hmm. she didn't go to the awards because he was always knocking her down emotionally and verbally. Like, you know, are you going to go? You're not going to win, you know. And then um, she read the uh, thing for Norma Ray, the script. And a lot of us know that she did win her first Academy Award for that. But he was trying to discourage her with that. Like, no lady of mine is going to portray a whore, he says, for Reynolds. Um, and things like that. So it was just that relationship really was not meant to last. I mean, her kids didn't like him and he didn't want to be around her son. So where's that going to lead? Plus the other things that he was saying. And um, what I liked about, she was talking about the director for Normal Ray and he let her do her thing and be her thing. He, and But he would critique very small things of the actors. So he was... Um, he wasn't a controlling director, but he did look at the details. Like if somebody was saying yes, were they also nodding their head? And so I'm going to request the movie um, Norma Ray. I don't think I finished it before, 
but now, um, you know, that's just uh, makes it seem more interesting to me. Was Norma Ray, was that where she was trying to get the cop in before it rained or something? No, 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 no. You might be thinking of places in the heart where yeah. she won for that too, and I never finished that with you either. This one, she's a mill worker in Alabama, mm -hmm. and they were abusing what was filmed. Oh, the yeah, the labor. Yeah, one. She got yeah. the labor yeah, the was, yeah. going there. And it, the, the, not hard to believe that conditions were um, unbearable. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just getting to that point. So I'm going to watch that uh, movie again. But, you know, she she came from TV, and for someone to get that kind of respect that she did, but Sybil, you know, she won an Emmy for that. That was kind of a launching point for a more serious uh, mm -hmm. career for her. And I like her. She can do comedy. She can just do um, a lot of different things. So. Yeah, I think that was the last thing Joanne Woodward did too, I believe. Yeah, Joanne Woodward was with her in um, in Civil. So I'm really enjoying her, you know, her process of, of her career and everything. So um, I haven't finished it, but I'm almost done, but I do recommend it. Okay, there are several night service. Uh, one of them looks like maybe a science fiction thing. It says a tale of travel and terror from the gay mythos e-book. Isn't, uh, isn't it Night Circus? No, this is Night Circus. Oh, were you talking about Night Circus? Night Circus. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then that's why I said <laughs> Well, there we go. I like part of hearing humor. That's how we get Now, a friend said her son was really into it and read it. It was his favorite book, and he reads it every two or three years. He just loves the book, and I, I didn't ask her what it was about. Well, it know. says that it's a must-read classic. It's a what? Must-read classic. Oh, a must-read classic. Okay, but it's not telling me what it's about. Did it say who the author is? Um, yeah, I'm just right there. Uh, well, this just wants to sell it. It's not telling me anything about it. I'll see what else I can find. It's uh, a secret. It's a secret, yes. I'm um, going to get away from the ads. Nice circuit. National bestseller. Uh, do -do 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 -do. All of this, they, they just, they, they go, okay. The circus arrives without warning. No announcements precede it. It is simply there. Uh, when yesterday it was not. Within the black and white striped canvas tents is an utterly unique experience full of breathtaking amazement. It's called the Le Cirque de Rev, and it is only open at night. But behind the scenes, a fierce competition is underway. A duel between two young magicians, Celia and Marco, who have been trained since childhood expressly for this purpose by their mercurial instructors. Unbeknownst to both of them, this is a game which only one can be left standing. Despite the high stakes, Celia and Marco soon tumble headfirst into love, setting off a domino effect of dangerous consequences <coughs> and leaving the lives of everyone from the performance to the patrons hanging in the balance. And that was that was published about five or seven or eight years ago. So I remember I remember talking about NPR on NPR about that. They have book stuff on NPR. Yeah, yeah, they do. I'm trying to yeah, look I think it. I remember them talking about that. I'm trying to see if there's and a thing. Well, of course, my ears are mixed up now. The author is Aaron Morgenstern. Um, it's a national bestseller that's been sold around the world and translated into 37 languages. Does it yeah, tell? that's the book I remember. Okay, yes, yeah, published 2012. Okay. When you're having fun or not. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that sounds like an interesting premise. Yeah, you know, you have musicians. And that woman, um, Corbin, that does the vocal views on NPR, she, uh -huh. was, she was really hot about she it. Was she over, was over. And that was top. before it even gotten out, hardly, and she was really hot about it. So that's 
So it must be a very good book. That might be a good book club book. book. Yeah. What, what do y'all think? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in my mind. I can't. Can someone sum up the, um, the plot or whatever? You know. The, 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 the well, in this circus that yeah. appears mysteriously, two young uh, magicians are are vying with one another for stardom, and then finally they they come to they 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 come together and they realize that there is something like a doomsday about it. Okay. And is it a long book or is no it idea. a movie? I have no idea. I know I don't I don't think it's a movie because it was just twenty twelve and I haven't heard I would have heard the about night it. Yeah, that would be on all your books too, which would be good yeah. for me. The night circus? Yeah, let me look and see how long it is and if it's a movie. Uh, while I'm doing that, does anybody else have something to recommend? I do. It's yeah. another form of media. All right. And uh, I've lately um, become an uh, ABBA aficionado. You know, they were from the 70s, mm -hmm. uh, 72 to 82. And of course, I knew about them then. And even in 1992, they did release a greatest gold album. Mm -hmm. I bet that. Uh, back then, we didn't have access to media like we do now, but their songs were very catchy. And most people liked them. And one thing, um, they're from Sweden, two married couples. And one thing that they say, I've watched some documentaries now and so forth on YouTube, is that ABBA never had the problem <coughs> of being really hated by people. Like, for instance, people would get into a real hate thing on disco for a while, and it was a real ab reaction. Um, ABBA was a combination of glam rock, pop, and disco. Um, they have really interesting outfits. What I learned was that if they would wear outfits that would not be used on the street, then they could deduct them from taxes. <laughs> oh. So they had these, like, Bjorn would have, like, a cape and you know, so that explains, you know, some of the uh, outfits. But uh, so they had piano, guitar. The two uh, women singers, at first they were male leads and they were background leads. But anyway, they, they became really popular. And as most of us know, there's been two movies, Mamma Mia, a, Bra a Broadway play, Mamma Mia. But the latest thing was something that really interests me. And it would be hard for me to actually see it, but it's called Abba Voyage. So it's using the very latest in technology. A lot of people know about the, um, what's the word for it, where they recreate the images. Oh, the remastering type? Uh, on stage where it's three dimensional. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not that, it's an even later technology. Yeah. I, they, I, I, it's yeah. oh, the it's, these are called digital avatars, so it's even more advanced. Because they made the observation that the hologram um, concerts would get to be boring at some point. So what they do is they have to have the living person be alive so they can measure the cranium. But not only that, they wear these projection camera mm -hmm. outfits. And so the real people who are now in their 70s, for a period of five weeks, re-recorded and um, captured on camera, then moving about doing all their songs. And so the show is a, a combination of that, but using their younger people images of age 28, but them moving, and of course a 70 year old person doesn't move quite the same as a 28, but they could adjust for that. And so they even built um, an auditorium, uh, especially the ABBA arena, uh, with all the cameras and everything to recreate this. and. Um, and the tickets are about $105, you know, if you can get to London to see it. They can actually pack up this arena and move it to, say, New York or whatever. And I have to say, I would love to see that. People, the people who've gone, you know, and read their comments, it's called Abba Voyage, um, absolutely love it. And, you know, you'd have to be in Java to, to really love that. But what I like about it is the, uh, the fact that it's this latest technology. It's like the forefront Mm. of this kind of technology. Plus the fact that they had about 20 top 10 singles 
they had several more than that. So yeah, yeah all the songs are very catchy. Um, you know, I really admire now that I'm focusing on it. Some of their songs, like Chiquitita, you know, and that it's almost like an orchestral, like a symphony. The song Chiquitita, what is that? Chiquitita. Chiquitita is just the name of the boy that they're singing about. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really, um, yeah, I'm really impressed now that I'm really kind of focused. Weren't they from Sweden or somewhere? They are from Sweden. Sweden yeah. yeah, one of their members, uh, Annie Frida, was from, uh, she's Norwegian. And just a little interesting backstory: the Nazis in Germany had a program where their Nazi generals or people would impregnate young girls oh, wow. in the idea of furthering the master race. So Annie Frieda, as a result of that, um, right? her mother was Norwegian, but she was born in Germany. And so then the war ended in around 1945, and people turned against them. So they had to leave her and her mother and went to, um, I guess it was Sweden, and her mother died shortly after that, and she was raised by her grandmother, so that's an interesting backstory. Years later, she did meet her father, so she had a lot of loss, but anyway, um, uh, the other ones are Swedish, yes. So, Abba Voyage is the name of that show. Yeah. That, that sounds really interesting. Um, like the, the, the technological aspect of it, um, definitely, I, I, did, I did kind of wonder, you know, um, would, is, is that better or is that more interesting than just having them perform like as they are now? Well, they've had many offers to do that. Yeah. And they turned it down because basically when they were active from 72 to 82, they did give concerts, but they weren't, they didn't see themselves as that. They were just mainly recording artists. They did it so that their fans, you know, so that they could meet the fans, but mm -hmm. that wasn't their big thing. They were kind of the forefront of the videos mm -hmm. era and all that. So they turned it down, but um, yeah. I mean, I'm sure the fans would love that too, and maybe, you know, there's an open question of what maybe they still will mm -hmm. do that. So, um, anyway, with this, and like they said, it has to be a living person for them to capture the premium. They can't just do it for any artist that has died. Right. So, it, in order for it to be that accurate. So, it's more accurate than a hologram because it's called digital uh, avatars. And ABBA also has a museum in. Sweden, uh, in Sweden, what's the main city of Stockholm? Stockholm. Stockholm. And um, so you go there, and if Benny Anderson, the piano player, decides to play his piano at home, the piano starts playing there in the music. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> what do they call that? The, um, there's a word for it. Anyway, that, that's the that's what I remember Billy Joel saying, uh, interview with him, and he said he he did he refused finally to do studio recordings, and he just wanted to do live concerts because the studio recording they got in there and they started parsing everything mm -hmm. and doing everything over again, and the, the guitars weren't right, and this wasn't right, and then and, and you'd spend three weeks trying to make one song and with a concert you just went out and did it and everybody loved it and it's, it's kind of like a movie you know mm -hmm. they do take after take after take they're playing you just get out there and do it and so i remember rich uh, the story about mike nichols or the, who's afraid of virginia wolf and the scene where elizabeth taylor spits in Bert's, burton's face well they did that scene over Take one, take it. Finally, Taylor looked at Nichols and said, please, please, I don't want to spit my husband's face anymore. <laughs> you know, he's driving her crazy. And, 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 you just, you, and I've heard of movies where they do the one scene over and over again because the director is looking for something that mm -hmm. the actors can't deliver, whatever the problem is. And with a play, you just do it. You, you live or die. And, you know, if you do it, I don't know. It's, you can overdo things, needless to say. 
But yeah, I liked them. I thought they were great. And even like they, they gave a concert at Wembley um, Arena in London during their active years. And the big secret was that like Mick Jagger was there behind the scenes and Bruce Springsteen. All these pe people that you might think that they would be looking down on Alpha, but they were there at the concert. Um, anybody else have something to recommend? Any books that you've read that you think that we would enjoy? Oh, I know one thing. I, I missed the, because uh, of the storm thing, I missed the, uh, the yeah, the discussion of the, uh, mm -hmm. what was the title of it? The Children Act. Act. The Children Act. Yeah, yeah. We did it over yeah. Google. Yeah, and I, and I wanted, I, I, read, I heard it, I should say. And that's the trouble with all your books. They made the 18-year-old sound like a six-year-old. You know, they kind of walked his. But anyway, I was, I was kind of impressed because I read a, a McEwen book before, and it was about uh, the Berlin Wall, and I didn't like it even a little bit. But, you know, going through this thing, I was pretty impressed. Um, uh, I didn't think he quite got the viewpoint of the woman exactly being a man, how could he? But I thought he missed, like I didn't understand why she just didn't go to bed with the guy. And, you know, I mean, that's kind of- Yeah, that she, part aggravated. Yeah, because a lot of women, I've known, I've never been married, I'm certainly not a woman, but they say just grit your teeth and put up with it, you know, to get, keep the guy quiet or something. And, and, and that they had obviously not been intimate. And he didn't handle it. It just seemed a little incongruent. You know, he should. A, a normal man would have said, "Look, it's been a while, man. You know, here, have some wine and this." And and a normal woman would have said, "Well, to keep him quiet, I'll just go to bed with him, you know, or something." And then it got into this big trauma. And then again, you got, like I said before, you got the, all these different plots going on. But I thought it was pretty well done. I liked the thing with the, the accidental kiss, you know, and. And the kid is strung out, definitely. Mm -hmm. And and he basically fell in love with her. That's what it was. Well, it's kind of that whole thing they talk about uh, people getting well, dependent. Well, his were yeah. raging, yeah. and he's yeah. 18, and, and here's and this older woman. And well, and she's, people she's, get dependent with, with, their, with their counselors and their this and that, the other whatever age they are, but yes, a, a, a young young man would, a young person would. But I thought the ending was very poignant and mm -hmm. very sincere and very well done. And I was pretty, you know, I, I see now, I mean, and there were a lot of great lines. The one line I remember was the person who was in the hospital and she was wishing the well-meaning visitor would leave so she could get back to her illness. <laughs> Get back to what? Her illness. Yeah. She wished the well many visitor would leave her hospital room so she could get back up to her illness, you know. Seems funny to me, but it, there were a lot of good lines. Sometimes there. there is that. Yeah. But I, I, I can see now why they you and one all those awards, you know. I have new respect for him. Well, from the movie, I liked the fact that, because uh, I did watch the, the director's commentary on the movie. And it, what it brought out was that it was from her viewpoint, like she was in mm -hmm. her office, and then mm -hmm. she goes out to the courtroom, rather than the people in the courtroom looking mm -hmm. up to the judge. So that was kind of fun. Mm -hmm. you know. And another thing, he slid in there at the end, they, they always tell you not to change the character or the personality of a, one of the characters. So, she, so you're set up with the woman, you're thinking she's the state judge, you know, this proper life and you find out she was a wild teenager you know hooking up with a band and all this stuff and it just seemed like it was a contrary but it worked so it, it, all you need is the effect to help with the rule but that kind of shocked me you know that kind of that came out of the blue because you the whole novel she's been kind of prim and kind of controlled and this dignified judge and you find out she's basically a wild hippie grody teenager drug freak or whatever she was. But it works, so you know, that's all that matters is the effect. Yeah, it was that there was definitely character development. Um, if you want, we did the we did the Google Meets uh, 
meeting and you can watch the Google Meet meeting or listen to it if, if, you, if you're interested. Anybody who missed it, you know, we were closed, so we did it virtually, anybody who couldn't participate. Well, I'm computer stupid, but I got a friend that knows how to do that stuff, so maybe oh. she can do it for me. All right. All right. Um, well, if nobody else has anything to throw in the recommendation pot, um, this month we are reading The Wife by Meg Wolitzer, and we did get copies today. We got, we were two the weeks late on the wife delivery. Wife. The wife, like the husband's oh. BFF. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to miss you when you leave. Anyway, the <laughs> husband's and ghost and writer. Will do the night circus sometime, maybe. I would love, I, I like the idea of the night circus. What, what do y'all think about the night circus? I don't have enough, you know. Okay. What's the wife about? A wife of you? It's a movie too. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Um. It's. I. I think. Um. Miss Katie recommended it. Yeah. So it. Uh. Everyone expected uh, Glenn Close to win the Best Actress for that, including Glenn Close. But and I thought the movie was much better than the one that it did. Best Actress did win for a movie that I didn't even finish called The Favorite. But anyway, I thought the movie was very strong, and so she's a, she's a ghostwriter for her husband, who oh. is going to win, a, is it a Nobel? Yeah. I haven't read yes. it yet. Nobel Prize. In, wow. where is that, Sweden or Norway, where is that? The Nobel? Uh, in Norway. No, so he gets a Nobel Prize and his wife's doing the writing. She did all the writing, and, oh, um, and the movie explores what those reasons are. And so going back to Harvard in the 50s, where they met, she oh, was well, that's why. Yeah. Yeah. She was that his student. Interesting. Yeah, it is. And so uh, one scene that always stands out for me, it's in the book and the movie. And so uh, the Glenn Close character, portrayed by her real life daughter, uh, is in Harvard in the 50s. And she tells her professor, I, I want to be a writer. And the lady says, pick any book on this shelf here, women's authors. So she picks one and she says, open it up. And you hear the binding break. And she said, people don't read uh, women authors. So she figures out and, and that she's a better writer than her husband because he's having problems and then so she fixes it and it gets to the point where you know she's doing most or all of it. And of course he gets all the credit. <laughs> so the point is, is that in order for her to have be read at all, she would have to do this, they believe. Well, that's why so many and, uh, female authors use females. Right, and so this is written by a woman, mm -hmm. woman too. Yeah, but, but anyway, <laughs> same. So, so there's that, and then, you know, there's increasing resentment on her part, and she's not all that crazy about him in the first place. So there's all these issues kind of brewing, but the other one is that he's got a biographer who figures this out. And this person becomes a more forbidding character because he, he keeps coming in and asking questions and complaining. And he's even there in Norway, uh, you know, and all that. So everything kind of comes to a head in the movie and the book, of course. So it's, um, it's about writing. And so from that standpoint, you know, it's... Um, intriguing for people who are love to read. Oh, speaking of movies, um, I sign up for classes at the Senior Center in Savannah, and one of them is a movie class where we watch a movie and then we talk about it, and one of them was, uh, well, the theme was spies, and they were so good, and the one that I remember the most was called uh, The Catcher Was a Spy about Mo Bird. Um, it was right after, well, it was toward the end of World War II when they, everybody was struggling to beat everybody else to develop the atomic bomb. And he was sent over to decide if this German was, uh, this German scientist was really working on the bomb or was he, what, what was going on. And he was, he, he was, and I, what made it interesting to me was that he, was a baseball pitcher, but he was a scholar. 
he had gone to college and he was an outstanding scholar. So that's why they sent him over to Germany to decide if this was a, and also they could hide him by having like a, a, a show baseball game and he could go over there and nobody would suspect, you know, why he was there. So uh, that that was a wonderful movie. The, the capture was a spy. Movie I ever saw was the spy that came in from the color oh, yeah. of Burton. Yeah. I'm telling you, you know, most of the spy movies are just flat out adventure. Uh huh. And I'm sure there's good acting in them, but to me, I I don't know of anybody that had the presence and the voice mm -hmm. and the acting ability that Burton had. I mean, he just he was just overwhelming to me. I I, I can't even think of an actor. Well, there were there's dozens of excellent excellent actors, but not any that had his face and his voice. That was too attributes that most of the actors don't don't have that quality or that level of quality or whatever I'm trying to say. Did you read the book? Yeah, I read the book and I saw the movie. Okay. The book, man, LeClaire, it seemed like, I don't know, that these people... He and Faulkner would have been good friends. Oh, but I mean, <laughs> the, the spy that came in from the coal was like way up here and everything else LeClaire wrote is a little bit lower, you know what I'm saying? I mean, LeClaire, great stuff, great writing, mm -hmm. but he hit the standard. It, it, I don't know how to explain it. It just, it was a, just a, 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 I don't know how to explain it. It's just a better, some of these people, they hit the pitch on, to me, the, and that wasn't his first book, but that was his, but everything after B, Gladney's Rainbow was close, but everything after that was way down here, way. But V was right up there with that. I've never even heard of that one. Oh, God, it blow your mind. He, he, he did a thing of, of Rachel Alzey's walking down the street in New York. It was a, a half a page description. He got everything in there. You could possibly, every piece of information you could possibly get in the universe with her just walking down the road, and he did it seamlessly. If, it, if you weren't a writer, you wouldn't have even noticed it. You you just said, well, this is good. Just amazing, just amazing. But then he started writing this strange stuff, and I don't know what happened after that. But I was pretty good. I'm sorry, what, what, what's the book you're talking about with the woman walking down the street? Uh, the, it's called V, the letter V with a period. The letter what? V. 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 As in, as oh, okay. V as what, the Victor, Victor, Victor or? Yeah, Victor. That's a, but it, and, and I read an anthology, and they actually called it the best American novel of the 20th century, which is saying something. Yeah. Considering some of the really great novels that have come out. Okay. Um, so, do we want to vote on book clubs? This month is The Wife. And then after that is Fair. After that is Fair. That's October. So we have to pick our November book club. Well, I won't be here, so I won't vote. The what? I said I won't be here, so you I won't Google vote. You can Google me. You can Google me. You're inheriting money and moving to France. Only in my dreams. No, I'm just moving to Savannah. <laughs> Well, I think some someday along the line you'll we'll try that night circus thing. All right. What do you vote for? Um, I like accordion crimes. That sounds really interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, I would have to say. <laughs> oh, in pieces. I'm not a real fiction fan. You know, I do oh. like the movies better. But okay. So that you know. Well, I think that's about one. If it's got words on it. Yeah, except, yeah. Okay. So next, at the end of this month, we're going to do The Wife. The Wife by okay. Meg Wallinson. I'll get that through the, through the model. All right. We have copies, uh, but you're an audiobook listener, right? So I, I well, think it's on Libby. I can read, but it's... Uh, in the movie, I donated a copy of the movie. Did they catalog that yet? Did I sent it in back? for cataloging. Sometimes it takes a little while for them to get mm -hmm. through it. 
Um, but I sent it in. Okay. But people use other mediums for their movies too. Right, right. Um, so, um, yeah, I kind of like accordion crimes. Um, the Night Circus sounds interesting. Of course, I really liked The Spare Man, but I don't know that anybody else would. <laughs> and Keep Forth the Rainforest. Yes, yes. I don't know if that would be a good. So, yeah, we, that could lead to nonfiction. Mm -hmm. We could do that. But does, does anyone else like this? I guess not. I'm not a big biographer. Uh, but that doesn't matter. I'm not Autobiography. Yeah, yeah. That, there's a difference. Well, but it, it sounds interesting. I don't know. Um, it, it certainly it certainly sounds interesting. I'm not I'm not knowledgeable about like that era of you know actors and and you know. Yeah, her, it, come, it was written ten years ago, mm -hmm. and she's made some good movies since then. Mm -hmm. But but it does cover her movies. I think up to. 2012. Did it? Oh, so, 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 so what did she, Mary she, Lincoln. Yeah, she was in, uh, she played Mary Lincoln. What was the one that was about the gal that died, and she took the entire movie practically to die, and my husband said, isn't she ever going to die? <laughs> I don't know. Hmm? Oh, what was it? Oh, a whole bunch of good actors, and, um, and, uh, the, the, the guy, Never mind. All, everything has just gone out of my mind. Yeah. She made a good movie since then called um, Hello, My Name is Doris, about a 70-something lady who crushes on a 28-year-old co-worker. And that's a really good movie, but that's been made since the book. And it's real funny, you know, she dances and stuff like that. So. It was in the South. Was it Sound who cares? Oh, do you mean that one that was, um... It's been on TV forever the last month. There was a whole cast of characters. Yeah. I think that's a movie I tried to watch and never was able to get to. Yeah, my husband said. Yeah, I couldn't, it's, I couldn't she, get Julia into it. Julia Roberts was in it. Yeah, I could never yeah. get into it, so I never It was could. just people yelling at each other, and it yeah. made me understand that the male character... Must have been a play. I wouldn't ever want to be. What was that? Ocean's Eleven? No, 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 no. It was, this was a southern thing. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and they know Yes. Something about my Still Magnolia. Yeah, Still Magnolia. Dan, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, what's your name? Uh, Daryl Hannah. Yeah. And Polly Harton. Polly Harton. Polly. Yeah. And somebody. Whatever name was. <laughs> Well, thank you for coming. Okay, oh, we saw him at Picture and November book. Someone um, did that. Could have been. And somebody else um, did that. Oh, well, I don't think we're going to get to vote. There's um, about some southern town. Is everybody voting for something different? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll just have to, whatever. It'll work. It'll work. It'll work. It'll work. I remember John Kennedy wanted to marry Daryl. Yeah, or you heard. I don't know. That's because, like, but it's one narrative that's really popular. Okay. Okay. I think I would leave for the morning. I tell you, families. Rich family. people have families, and poor people have relatives. Mm -hmm. <laughs> rich people do what the family tells them to do, and the poor people do what they want to do. Well, sometimes. And rich people believe in money, and poor people believe in God. Well, sometimes. <laughs> no, all the time. Most of the time. Um. So. Yeah, I think accordion crimes would probably be our best bet, just because it's like it's that linear. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, make sense to me, but. Um. Well, what's another movie, famous movie out of the forties? Oh, there's a whole huge list. The what? Oh, there is a whole huge list. What time is it? It is three fifteen. I gotta go. But there's a whole list. Uh, she'll look it up on the computer for you. I, I sure will. And you know well, what? Why, why can't we think of it? Because I'm old and I have nothing else <laughs> that stays in my head longer than about my hey, 10 minutes. you think you're old, when you get to be 147 or probably? Shoot. Honey. Why are you in such a hurry? What do you got I, I've got to go to Savannah. Can you take me with you? Well, if you want to go and listen to my brother and my sister-in-law, you're more than welcome. I'll sit in the car. Forty <laughs> movies. Okay, there are Gilda. 
<clears throat> Gilda, Notorious, uh, Lever to Heaven, Dark Passage, uh, Black Narcissus, Blue Dahlia, Razor's Edge, um, Double Indemnity, The Passionate Prince. I think the 40s were the noir. I've seen about three or four of those. So uh, the I, Big Sleep. Yes. Shadow of a Doubt, The Third Man. Oh, The Third Man was so good. I gotta see if it's on camera. Uh, to Have and Have Not. The Dark Mirror. Postman Always Rings Twice. I remember that one. The Philadelphia Story. I remember that one. Rope. Mm -hmm. Grapes of Wrath. Lifeboat. Um, Lifeboat was good. Sorry, wrong number. Magnificent Amberson. You didn't like that one? I thought it was too sweet. Okay. Lost Weekend. Uh, Naked City. And there's a bunch more that I didn't. Best Years of Our Life. Lifeboat, they they were trying to figure out which person to throw out of a lifeboat. Yeah, they, they were all yeah, yeah they, they were all having issues. That was an interesting that sort of thing. Yeah. I can't remember what they decided to do if they did something. I guess. Oh well. But anyway, those were four movies. Film noir. Okay. Um. You know, I, I was the other day that I read that Glenn Coke. I can't talk anymore. Glenn Close had been nominated for Best Actress about seven times and never won. Which says something about the Academy Awards. Of course, it's so political anyway, it's not even funny. Mm. And come to think of it, the Nobel thing is political too. Mm. Nobody goes on there anymore, it's all politics. I guess. Well, Lou, I'll see you. Now, when do we meet? The third Thursday? The, the last Thursday last of, the, of the month is the book club. First Thursday of the month is recommendation group. So the end of this month, we are going to talk about the wife. The last Thursday. Okay. The wife by Meg Wolitzer. Just out of curiosity, do you know how long that book is, the wife? I don't know. I haven't started it yet. Um, I mean, is it 300 pages, 200 pages? All right, well, I'm going to look this up. Because the audio books, they go by hours, and it's amazing how hard it is to call. I can't even call 10 minutes out of the day to do my next thing. Okay. The Wife uh, by Meg Wolitzer. I'm looking on the... I'm going to just tell me what it is, how long it is, that's the basic thing about audiobooks. Um, Have you got it there? Oh, uh, no. Okay. Um, it's probably around 300, I guess. Eight hours and nine minutes. Oh, that's not bad. No, not at all. I got a book on World War II, an audio book, it was 50 hours. So it took a long time to get through that, baby. Mm -hmm. Well, it must have been compelling to keep you for all that time. Well, it's more like I kept the book for four months, you know. But it's a lot easier to read than it is. My complaint is, it's like that book, um, The Children's Act, the and, and they always have women doing the reading, it seems like, and the, the range of my ears is like here, and the women's range is up here somewhere, and you miss words. And they, they talk in a normal case, then they drop their voice, you know, and, and you can't pick up what they're saying. It's, it's kind of irritating, but it's better than me trying to read it, I know that. All right. But anyway, I'll see you with the last of last of Yes, yes. Um, and we'll be discussing the wife and 
Um, and then next month we're doing um, Spare by Prince Harry. That's October. What? Spare the Prince Harry autobiography. Oh, that one is long. That one is going to be a long book. What? Spare the Prince Harry book. It's like 700 pages. Um, what did I, I thought I picked. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you, you know what's going on over your hat. Mm -hmm.